We are incredibly lucky right now to be joined by Henry Winter, who is the Times' new chief writer. Football writer. Football writer, not just don't let, writer. Don't let me on any other sports. <laughs> I have enough trouble keeping on top of football. <laughs> OK, uh, well, you guys have sent us some questions, so I'm going to pose them to Henry here, give you some answers. Uh, so the first one is from someone called Farman, who said, who should be the next manager, Laurent Blanc, Pochettino or Ryan Giggs, because it doesn't look like United are getting Guardiola or Mourinho? Pochettino. Pochettino, you talk to here, the players currently under him at Tottenham Hotspur and former players of his at Southampton, mm -hmm. and they say training is harder than games. He yeah. really works them. I was talking to one player who said he just came off training and he was just exhausted. He works them hard. He gives young players a chance, which is yeah. important for Manchester United. I'm a huge Ryan Giggs supporter, mm -hmm. uh, but I do think he needs to go away and learn his trade yeah. somewhere. Um, and who was the other one? Uh, or Laurent Blanc. Larry White. Yeah, I, mean, I like him, but I, I think if there was anyone who would hit the ground running yeah. with Manchester United, it would be Pochettino. Good football, hungry players, but you, not too much width. You say about the hard work. I have a friend who works for Southampton, and he said the first thing that everybody talked about when Pochettino left and Koeman came in was that the gym was emptied. Mm. All the equipment disappeared because Koeman didn't want that kind of right. work happening. But maybe that's, the, 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 that's, well, that was Koeman's style. Yeah, just, just thought it was interesting, yeah. so I'd throw it in. Uh, a guy called John Simp says, why are Sir Alex and Bobby Charlton not coming out publicly regarding the brand of football at United? But because they can't. Yeah, well, I mean, they, they? I mean it's, <laughs> you know, it's, maybe Sir Alex will, we've got another book coming out. No, I think they, um, I think that people know that what those two individuals, rep great individuals represent, is not being reflected on the pitch at the moment in yeah. terms of the hunger, in terms of the mobility, in terms of the width, the attacking, yeah. the breathlessness. I mean, Manchester, I just had always, when Ferguson was manager, I, with my previous employers at Telegraph, I said, when we do the run up, when the match report is going on, I would normally file um, two thirds of the piece mm -hmm. at half time. Yeah. I renegotiated for Manchester United matches that I would file 15 minutes into the second half, whatever it was, 650 words, yeah. on the first hour's play, because Ferguson's impact on players at half time and they would come flying out the traps yeah. in the second half, which would often define the match. Well, maybe you could get Lou Van Hal going. Yeah. Uh, so the next one is from Kumar, who says, is Edward Wood reluctant to sack Lou Van Hal because he's worried over his own position? Oh, I don't think Edward has got anything to worry about because the Glazers, all they're interested in money. Yeah. And, um, Wood guy Wood loves is, the money, Wood, doesn't he? Woodward Wood, Wood is unbelievable in, in how he creates uh, huge fortunes, which yeah. <coughs> unfortunately will uh, ultimately disappear to the Everglades rather than uh, to Manchester United. So, no, I think mm -hmm. he's, in a, he's in a very strong position. I quite like Woodward not rushing to, to, to make a decision, or certainly mm -hmm. that's the way it seemed this season. Um, because I, I think Manchester United have looked down on clubs like Chelsea, who yeah, for, on changing for their manager, and they the want a little bit of loyalty. Yeah, just, I mean, no, this is not the question, this is me. Do you think that at this stage it's surprising that Lou Van Hal still has his job? Would you have expected him to be fired? And I mean, there's the stories of him resigning and stuff, and then obviously he got upset about it. What's your take on what's happening? Do you think the pressure reflects the situation accurately? I think he needs more players. Mm -hmm. I think he needs some of the players who were there to step up. But I just think he's misread English football. I yeah. think he's misread Manchester United. Now, look, he is Lou van Gaal. I've sure. interviewed him, and it's all about, everything's about him. Mm -hmm. Everything's about doing things his way. When I went to interview him, I said, how long have I got? And he said, uh, 40 minutes. And um, we were outside, we are about I don't know, 400 yards away from his office. And he said, no, no, you only have 38 minutes because it takes me two minutes to walk back to my office and I have a meeting <laughs> at four o'clock. So everything is done to yeah. clockwork the Van Gaal way. And I just think he's, he's overcomplicated. He needs <laughs> to let Manchester United off the leash. Just let them breathe a bit. Makes sense. Um, so from Scolzi134, probably not actual Paul Scholes, uh, is Manchester United lagging behind in the terms of transfers? Uh, they shouldn't be, given the wealth they've got and because yeah. of the lure they've got. Mm -hmm. The one problem Manchester United do, first they've got to be in the Champions League because mm -hmm. uh, pl um, players are interested in that. And they also need to be, a lot of players want to come to the south. You look yeah. at Kabai, Kabai wanted to yeah, be yeah. in London. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying he's necessarily a Manchester United target, but, but Manchester United should be going out there with a bit of swagger saying we're Manchester United. I mean, if you ask the Premier League, mm -hmm. the Premier League, in terms of global reaction to a Premier League winner, there are only two clubs who really feature high up. Yeah. First, Manchester United, second, Liverpool. Yeah. If Liverpool win the title, the, the, the cash deals for the Premier League ring all over the Far East. Uh, and Manchester United, exactly the same, because they're huge globally. And Manchester United should be 
behaving with a little bit more style, a little bit more swagger yeah. on the pitch. Okay, uh, I'll ask you one more. And <laughs> this, uh, uh, how many world-class players do you think are in the current Manchester United squad? And that's from Fluky Punditry. <laughs> how do you define world-class? Um, yeah. I mean, at the moment in, in world football, I'd say they're probably about seven or eight world-class players. Yeah, I heard a good one once, in, in which was somebody said, you could define a world-class player if they're in the top three in the world in their position. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I think that's probably okay. Well, you've certainly got one in David De Gea. Yeah, and I think I mean this has been the season of the goalkeeper in the Premier League. It's not been a great Premier League this season, but yeah. the goal, I mean he is he is outstanding. Um, Smalling's developed mm -hmm. this season. Certainly wouldn't call him world class. Rooney on his day and on a Rooney supporter can yeah. be world class, particularly if he's played in his his best position and particularly if there's yeah. a lot of pace put around him. Martial in a couple of years' time may become mm -hmm. world class. I know the fans love Herrera. I just like to see him see his games a bit more. Obviously, he needs to be given yeah, a yeah. starting opportunity. Okay. But not many world-class players. Whereas, you know, I mean, I've covered Manchester United for the last 25 years, and they were world. You know, you looked at that 1940 world-class players in every position. Okay. Henry, thank you very much, guys. Uh, get your comments in below. That was amazing, wasn't it? Hi, guys. Adam here. I'm with Charlie Wrights at Old Trafford. United have won 3-0. Charlie, got to be happy with that.